Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for April 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th, Monday through Thursday. Now, of course, I am going to use, and this is this part is just the introduction. I will put in the timestamp when to start your actual readings in the description below. So this is the introduction. This is like the overview. But for the um, main readings, I will use my Radley Valentine Archangel Power Tarot cards, and I will also use my Guardian Angel cards. I will pick one from my Emily Anderson Crystal deck also. For this introduction, we're going to use the regular Weight Rider and the Colette Baron Reed The Good Tarot. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. Just remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. So we have had a lot of solar storms going on. We've had a lot of energy fluxes. We've had, you know, the, the planets are still going direct until about, until, there, until April 29th. That's when Pluto will be going retrograde. It will stay in Capricorn, though. So we still, you know, we might be revisiting some of the things we've just revisited. Now, we also have Gemini, uh, Mercury going into Gemini. Now, when that happens, you have to understand, Merc Gemini is very, very direct, very frank, very, um, can be brutally honest, in fact. So when Mercury, which is the planet of communication, also of electronics, you know, just, you know, there could be some extreme um, frankness and bluntness in communications during that time. Now, when we get into May, we will have you know, Mercury will be going retrograde, but that's in May a little bit longer. We're not there yet. So we have that. The planets have been going direct, um, and even though we would think that that would be very positive and that would be very, um, you know, very good, and it's not. It's not that it's not good or not positive. It's just that the planets have been getting very close to each other, so their energies have been even stronger than normal. And it will continue this way for a little bit of time. Now, I have posted about the four planets that are in, you know, in alignment. Well, when we have the new moon, what that's going to be around the 30th. The 30th will be the new moon. It will be in Taurus. And we will also have a solar eclipse at that time. So then the new moon, I think the new moon is what joins the alignment. And this alignment is going to get stronger and stronger. So... Interesting times, as always, the planets, you know, many, you know, many of the um, spiritual texts say look to the heavens and the planets are getting in alignment and there will be even more of an alignment as we go forward. So let's see what we have here. We're going to ask traditional tarot, what's going on in the universe what do we need to know for the universe what is it that would be very good for the universe can you give us what can you give us remember the you know this is the universal um overview and the smaller ones you know not the smaller ones the ones that follow will be more specifically for you whatever goes on in the universe we still have to live our lives so let's see what we've got here for the universe, universal perspective. Here we go. One, two, three. So I told you that I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. But also remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. And I do have a new camera stand. So let's see if I can uh, get this a little bit closer without messing it up too much. Okay, let's see what we have here. First card is the star. So we have a 17. Remember, numbers have power also. So, you know, I kind of get, after what I was just saying, look to the stars. We've had a lot of meteorite showers. We're still having those going on too. But the star is full of hope. The star is full of promise. The star is full of things that are going to happen that will be for the betterment. There is a balancing of energy also with this. Just as, you know, I'm, you know, we can say that one is pouring into and pouring out of, or one is going up into and coming out of. Uh, you know, this person does not have clothes on, so there is a vulnerable time. This is opening ourselves up to some vulnerability. But again, the star is about wishing on the star, is about putting that star out there, uh, putting those hopes, those dreams, and 
as we come closer to the new moon, which we're not quite there yet. The new moon is about a time of new seasons. So the star is very much full of hope. So we have a 17, which we have a 10. Tens are transitional numbers. One new beginning. Zero is God's source energy. Seven is a divine number. Divine umbrella, as I like to call it. Next card is, so now we have an eight. Eight, unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. This is the eight of rods or wands. This is the eight of fire. This is our Aries, our Leo, our Sagittarius, our, you know, our getting out there, our passion, our, you know, just commitment. Now, this is busy times. This is coming, going, coming, going. You know, is, are we catching these? Are we throwing these? This is not necessarily adversarial. This is just very much a time of busy energy. You know, and again, all of these, you know, these st solar storms, these this, this ascension energy that we've been going through, it's very busy. It's, so it might not necessarily feel comfortable and we may not actually feel like we've got a control over this. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Now we have the Page of Pentacles. This is, you know, the court cards have their have a dual uh, um have a dual energy to them. So Page's um, underlying energy is Earth. Pentacles is Earth energy. That is our Taurus, which we're in, and we're about to come to the Taurus new moon. It is Taurus. It is Virgo. It is Capricorn. It is money, job, career, it is about our home life. You know, it is what we can touch. It's very, very tangible. The Page of Pentacle is generally about a new job, a new way of making money, a new a new opportunity to make money. Getting very eager and very, you know, kind of like seeing seeing the opportunities out there. So we've got something going on that's going to be extremely busy for this week. We've got, you know, wishes and hopes being fulfilled and also to um, saying, you know, putting our wishes and hopes. So there is an energy to this that's saying, let's get started. Let's let's start to live again. Let's start to put our energies out there again. Let's start to have hope again. Because the page is like, things are going to get better. Things will get better. But we also have to go back to our star card where we say, you know, we have to put that energy out. Remember, I'm always telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that we are star workers we are star seeds we are the ones you know that need to be the one need to be the balance we need to put out our light not put it out as in uh, shut it off we need to shine our light okay and this is going to be that time but i am being called my eyes are being called to that um page of pentacles that and you know the page is very very optimistic the page loves to try and the page is just like, yeah, I really want this. I want to. I want something. So there's movement. There is movement. Hopefully we can feel it. Hopefully we can hold on to that. Okay, let's go on here. Okay. Well, now we come to a reverse card. To me, says that you know that's a little bit you know a little bit more power. So we want to pay attention. This is a major arcana. This is a number eight. Eight, we've talked about unlimited opportunities. However, this is also talking about strength. Now, the strength here is, you know, is this that we're going to still need to have some strength to get through this? Definitely. This week, um, you know, but at the same time, this is where we have to pull into ourselves. We have to look and see what it is we need to be strong about. Now, I have always, you know, I'm always telling you, or I haven't told you maybe for a while, you know, you never pray for patience because when you pray for patience, you have to wait. You never pay, pray for courage because when you pray for courage, you are put into situations where you need to have courage. The other thing is you never pray for strength because then you need strength. Okay, so having said that, having said that, this is finding that inner strength. This is finding that connection between the beast and the humanity. And this is also gentling and loving and caring for that beast type of energy. So, you know, it's not necessarily the strength where we have to be uh, forceful and we have to be, you know, um, harsh to others. This is finding strength through kindness, through gentleness also. It's also, you know, it's there's kind of a taming of the beast with this strength. That strength may be in our own self, um, you know, many times over, you, know, you might be in a situation where you want to lash out, and this might be where you just need the strength to hold it in. 
because lashing out is not going to be productive, is not going to help us through whatever it is. It can only add negative energy. Now, I'm not saying that you don't try and that you don't, you know, continue to keep, you know, shining your light and, shi you know, and shining brightly. It's just, this is really, I'm really getting a lot with the strength card here. And it's, it's about really holding things, not, not presenting them, not putting them out there in a, in a harsh negative or, um, just a mean energy. Uh, so I'm kind of getting, you know, whatever's going on here, it may push us to want to react in that more negative way. And we're going to really have to find the strength to be kind and to show that we love and that we are loved. So something, there's a lot with this strength. Uh, let me know what you think about this because um, you know, I just, I really, I really like hearing the shared comments on this. We have hope. We have busy, busy times, which again, those, uh, even though, you know, even though the planets are direct, it's really still, they're very close to each other. We have new opportunities, new possibilities, but we need to have strength. We need to be kind. We need to be gentle during this time. And many times that is what takes strength. Okay. Okay. Uh, why don't we get going? Um, please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. I really appreciate you doing that. You keep the channel moving and keep the channel growing. So thank you. Okay. Why don't we start our readings now? Hello, my Scorpios. How are you? Well, we do have that new moon coming, and then right after that, well, two weeks after that, we have the full moon, which will be in Scorpio, which will also have a lunar eclipse. So Scorpio energy, there's a lot of Scorpio energy that's building and building and building for this month, which could be very positive. Scorpios, I always think of you as the detective, so things could be uncovered. So let's see what higher power has for my Scorpios for this week as we enter that new moon piece. Remember, you are a water sign, so that has a lot of connection with the moon's uh, cycles. So let's see what we have. One, two, and three. These two reversed, very strong energies. First card for my Scorpios. The wheel. Oh, I love this for you. I do. Things are finally, finally moving forward. A lot of energies are over with. You're embracing the future, and the future is really pushing you forward. You've take you've gone through some rocky starts. You've gone through some you know just rocky roads in general, and you know not the ice cream. You've gone through just you know just a lot of turmoil, and now the wheel is just saying, let's move forward and let's get into a better place, a better time. So we have the 10. 10 is transition, moving forward. One new beginning. Zero is God's source energy. This is Archangel Jeremiah. This is letting go so much of some of, the, of a lot of the end, a lot of stuff that has been negative that you, my Scorpios, do hold on to. You've got to let it go. It's not been helping you. Remember, we are still in the waning part of the moon, so it's really a good time to get out there and just release and relinquish, cutting a lot of ancestral ties that are you know, of the negative energies from the ancestral ties, keeping the positive, but cutting anything that is holding you back. And, you know, you don't have to identify it. You just need to give that to your source, to your God, to whoever it is that you talk to. But this is let's move it all, move on. This is the wheel of fortune. This is now let's get ready to embrace something better. Okay, new beginnings. End of delays, a change in direction that offers happiness. I love that for you. Your next card is the six of Ariel, so there is money here. So we have six is the um, number of man. It's the energies you've put into something. Ariel is our earth energy. It's our Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy, money energy. We're in Taurus right now, so and we got that new moon Taurus, so embrace Embrace the possibilities. This is magical times, magical money, magical opportunities that are happening. Now, yes, even though this is very tangible energy, it's in a ma it's a magical type of um, 
card. It's a magic, you know, a magical type of, you know, reciprocity. All right. Material needs get fulfilled in magical and unexpected ways. Acts of kindness, remember, go back to the strength in the beginning and the introduction, because I'm feeling like that connects. Giving or receiving with a grateful heart. And again, that's one of those times that you say to source, to God, to whoever that is, thank you, thank you. Next card reversed, the Ace of Raphael. So we have a one, zero, six, and a one. One new beginning again. Raphael is your energy. It is also Cancer and Scorp and Pisces energy. There's still there's those planets still in Pisces that are in alignment. This is a new relationship, a new beginning, a new start. Now this is again something something you're you're being freed from something. You're being freed from something that might have had a very strong financial hold over you. It, you're coming to a better place with your money energy, and now may you know, may not may not quite feel it, but really it is. It is happening. It is coming into that better place and now you are ready you are open for a new romantic relationship now you know i've been feeling romance around you for a while so now it's kind of like your ducks are in a row with this you're you're ready for this now you're ready to be you're ready to receive you're ready to receive and i'm feeling that this has that really positive relationship energy to it well a positive new emotional experience Fulfilling romantic relationships, deep and lasting spiritual insights. So yeah, you know, again, the spiritual insights, the wheel, magic, there, you know, this week is magic for you um, and, you know, in financial, but it also looks like it's magic in that romantic too. Now, relationships can be about a job. It can be, you know, work, job, career. It can be also personal, intimate, interpersonal. I feel like this week, it's like everything is clicking into place for you. Things are clicking into place. Now, what are you thinking about it? What, you know, are you fighting it or are you just going to kind of go with that flow? I hope you go with that flow. Let's see, guardian angels. Guardian angels for my Scorpios. What do you want to tell my Scorpios, guardian angels? One more time. <laughs> for my Scorpios. Kind of wrap it up for my Scorpios. I like these when they summarize. Here we go. Successful completion. This is the world card. We have that two. Two's our choices. Which way do you want to go? You don't have to move forward, but the wheel of fortune and the six and the ace is saying, hey, you can't stay where you're at, or it's not healthy. Or it's not wise to stay where you're at. And then we have the 21, successful completion. This is a time of incredible accomplishment. You're justified in feeling joy, a sense of completion, and pride in the amazing job you've done. You've been blessed with many spiritual insights. Soon you'll begin a new journey, but for now, take time to bask in the happiness of your dreams coming true. The thing about the wheel is your new journey is about to happen. Your new journey is about to start. But you, you've, gotten, you've gotten rid of a lot of stuff. You've gotten rid of a lot of the negative energies, so now it's time for your new journey. Let's see what we've got. What crystal or energy for my Scorpios that would be helpful? This is yeah. I love your I love your your reading. There's a lot of balance with this. Also, it's kind of emotional and physical balance. It's things clicking together. You know, all the pieces are coming together, and it's now it's time to let go of something that was not you know, was not helpful and healthy for you. And it's time to move on and to embrace your future. Embrace your future. So what crystal or energy would be helpful for my Scorpios? Titanium rainbow quartz. Awakening all chakras. So it's getting all your energy um, systems aligned or awaken. Ultimate manifestation, vibrancy, powerful shift. Interesting with that. Interesting. Anyway, my Scorpios, the abundance, reach out, believe. Okay. Take a moment, please, my Scorpios, to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. As always, my Scorpios, know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.